Hi you guys, hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Today I have a really exciting video for you guys because it is jam packed, filled with information. This is a makeup tutorial for beginners. And when I say beginners, I mean, you guys can be starting from zero and follow along with this tutorial. What I personally have found is that a lot of times when you're looking for a makeup tutorial for beginners or like a very easy makeup look, they assume that you have a base knowledge of makeup and the different products, the different types of foundations, different undertones, all that stuff. And I don't want to assume that everyone knows that because everyone starts from zero. Everyone, there was a time where the best makeup artists on the planet started from zero. There was a time where I knew nothing. And you know, you acquire all this knowledge over the years and it's not easy to do that. So I really wanted to make a series, make a few videos here on my channel to help you guys throughout your makeup journey. And if you're just starting on that journey, I want to say thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. I really hope that this is helpful and educational for you guys. And if you have any questions that I don't answer throughout this video, please feel free, drop a comment down below and I will be happy to get back to you and answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Without further ado, we can hop right into the tutorial, guys. Okay, my loves, so the first step in our makeup routine is going to be primers. And so there is a ton of different primers out there that you can choose from. You can choose a pore filling primer, there's hydrating primers if you guys have particularly dry skin. If you have particularly oily skin, they make primers for that too. So everything what I say, <laughs> for every single step, I'm going to say you guys have to play around and find your own personal preference. For me, I love professionals. I know it is like super trendy. A lot of people do like this, but I just have big pores around my nose and my cheeks and I feel like this really, really helps. And so what primer does is it actually creates a barrier between your skin and the makeup. So the makeup is not seeping into your pores all day, which is great because we don't want to break out or anything like that. The only thing is, Primers because it has direct contact with your skin. You have to make sure and be very, very careful that you're not allergic to the primer that you're choosing. So I feel like, <laughs> and I've heard this uh, from a lot of people, is that they get irritation with this line right here. This is the all nighter uh, primer. Don't, don't knock it for sure. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful but just conduct a little allergy test beforehand. And you can even go into like Sephora or Ulta or anything like that and just ask for samples for things. They have these little sample sizes right here that you guys can get that they give to you. And it's just so easy and they're usually really nice about it. The next step we are gonna be talking about is foundation. And so this is by far the trickiest step and I think that this is something that people struggle with the most. Today, I'm gonna to be using this NARS Soft Matte Foundation in the shade Punjab. And I, I really like this foundation a lot. It works for me. But as I'm applying this, I'm going to tell you there are a ton of different options for foundations. So we have cream foundations, we have liquid foundations, we have powder, we have creamed powder all of that stuff. We also have a ton of different ways that we can apply our foundation. So what I'm going to do today, and which is one of my personal favorites, and I know a lot of people don't really like this, I'm just using my fingers. And I find that because I have combination skin, I can really feel my skin and my problem areas when I do this, and I can feel Everything is in place. You know, I can feel if I have any textures where I need the extra coverage, if that makes sense. And I know a lot of people don't like to do this and that's totally fine. You can abs absolutely, absolutely, absolutely use a brush or a sponge. Totally up to you. But I just like to use my fingers. I also feel like I get a little bit more even coverage like this. So picking the right foundation, again, is gonna be your own personal preference. If you have a little bit more dry skin, normally cream foundations are a little bit better. If you have 
any sort of oily skin, anything like that, obviously a powder foundation is what you guys are going to want to do and use. Um, it's just going to obviously cancel out a lot. That can be very tricky though. So you guys have to be super careful with this. And the one thing about foundation that is a staple tip is less is always more. Less in makeup is more in general. Less is always, always more. And I don't mean the less color or less less design. I mean, really less product is more. The least, the most minimalistic amount that you can use, that's what is going to make your makeup look flawless, airbrush, beautiful, and last way longer, especially if you have particularly textured skin because what happens when you cake on all that makeup and everything, texture doesn't go away. It doesn't. And that's very hard. It's very, very hard to deal with texture. So this is the best method for that by far. Another thing that people struggle with with foundation is picking the color that is right for them. And everyone struggles with that. It is not just you. I struggle with it. Professional makeup artists struggle with it all the time. And my best advice for you, and in the world of you know professional makeup, when you're doing a show or you're doing something like that, it's a little bit easier because normally you don't have to worry so much about oxidization and the makeup lasting so long because you're doing it for like a shoot or a runway and anything that's really quick, you know? But if you are doing makeup for a wedding or an event or anything like that, you really need to make sure that that skin tone is correct. So what I recommend is taking a few foundations that you think might be your color, putting them on your three fingers and just going down over here and making three stripes. If you are buying this for yourself and you have time, do that in the store, Sephora, Ulta, wherever you buy your makeup, walk out of the store, go, leave. <laughs> Leave for at least a half hour to an hour. What this is gonna do is two things. First thing is, you're gonna be able to see your foundation in all sorts of different lighting, which is really, really, really important because those stores have specific lighting in there and most of the time you know it's not very flattering. So you wanna be able to see that in natural light. You wanna see it where you're gonna be able to really live your life, you know, in that, in that style of lighting. Another thing is you are going to see how this foundation oxidizes on you. If it's making your skin particularly oily, if it's a little bit darker than you thought, you will know that because you'll have a big streak on your side and then you'll be able to better determine which color is right for you. So our next step is going to be concealer, you guys. And I know I'm talking like a mile a minute. I, I totally, totally understand but there's just so much information and it's so important that when you're starting off in makeup, you really understand, you know, because you want to be able to be confident in your makeup abilities. So I want to hopefully give you guys all of that information that I can to help you throughout your journey. So the general rule of thumb for concealer is to go two shades lighter than your foundation color. However, honestly, I don't think that a lot of people need concealer. Typically, I don't wear it every single day, but for the sake of the video and showing you guys what concealer looks like and how to apply properly and all of that stuff, I'm gonna show you. Um, again, it really depends on how bad your under eye circles are. If you have dark circles or anything like that, then of course use concealer and it does wake you up for sure. It definitely wakes you up and makes you feel bright and it's great. It's really, really, really great. So I'm using my MAC Studio Fix right here and I'm applying the smallest amount. I'm not caking on this concealer. I don't want a whole lot. And I'm not putting this, I, I'm not going for a super coverage look today. I'm just going for something that I can wear every single day or I can wear out to dinner just because I feel like, and again, I'm using my fingers to apply. You can use a sponge, you can use a brush. I personally feel that when you use a brush, it makes it a little bit streakier uh, than it could be, unless you use a buffing brush. 
And what that is compared to a concealer brush is just basically a little bit more fluffy. And also when you are using that, I'm not gonna be using that today. Uh, I'm gonna show you with one of my eyeshadow brushes right here. So you're gonna be buffing like this and then buffing backwards like that. So you're getting everywhere in, you know? I personally don't love that method. If it works for you, then absolutely do it. Again, this is all about what works for you and what you guys feel confident doing. This is just how I like to do it. And it's hard when you're a beginner at makeup and when you're starting off, it's hard to see yourself in makeup, you know, because you're not used to seeing yourself so heavy with makeup on. And so that's why I'm choosing a really basic look for today, because first of all, anyone can achieve this. Absolutely. And I'm a little bit more red here. So I am just going to do a little bit more, a little bit, another dot. And everyone has breakouts and stuff, so don't stress it. Even everyone that you see online has breakouts. And if they have flawless skin, then it's either fake or they're just having a really, really good day. No one has perfect flawless skin 24-7, so don't worry if you have a little bit of breakouts. And I'm just adding like tiny, tiny, tiny little bit over some of my breakouts, but I don't want that color to drag down too much. You know, I don't want to have a big white spot on one of my breakouts. That's a big problem I think people have when they try to cover up their breakouts first with concealer because then you just end up with this big white patch if you don't apply it properly. And that's not what we want because you're actually drawing more attention to those areas. And then also because it's lighter, it's going to make the texture even pop more because light and highlights like that, they pop out and then dark colors sink in. And that is going to lead us to our next step after this one, I suppose, uh, which is contour. But first we're going to just set our face. So there are a plethora of different ways on the internet right now uh, and just in general that people like to set their face. You do not have to, if you have dry skin, very, very, very dry skin, and you are terrified of powder, you don't have to use it. You don't have to set your face. If you feel like that makes it worse for you, you don't have to set your face at all. So my favorite thing to set with is the Kat Von D translucent powder. I love this powder a lot. Uh, I feel like this is one of the powders that doesn't leave a very bright, flashy kind of look, if that makes sense. So Huda Beauty, when choosing a setting powder, you have to take into consideration your skin tone. And so also in skin tones, there are different undertones. You have your reds and you have your yellows. If you are a little bit more pale, you're typically going to lean towards a more red or pinky undertone. And if you have more olive skin, you're typically going to be a little bit more yellowy undertones like that. They do have neutrals, absolutely. A good rule of thumb is if you tan very, very easily in the summer, you're most likely going to have a yellow undertone. And if you burn very, very easily in the summertime, you're most likely going to have a pink undertone. So, also, taking that into consideration with everything, with your foundation, with your setting powder, with your concealer, everything that you put on your face has to be in line with that, unless you are color correcting, of course, which we're going to get into. I know, you know, I'm talking like a mile a minute and I'm barely doing my makeup and I hope this isn't too long for you guys because there's just so much information out there and it's, it's so... It's so much, it's so, so much information and I wanna make sure that you guys are learning as much as I have to offer and I can also learn from you if you guys have any suggestions for me. But what I'm doing with this, so I'm taking this tiniest amount of powder and I am just sweeping it across my face. And if you have combination skin and say, 
you do want to set your face, but uh, you really, maybe your skin gets a little bit dried out, all of that stuff. You only really have to set the areas where you're going to be applying more dry powder, more dry. So if you're using a powder contour or a powder blush or anything like that, then just set the areas that you feel like setting. You don't have to set your whole face. If you're particularly oily in your T-zone, powder is definitely your friend. Uh, I have combination skin, like I said, so I am a little bit oily over here. And we're just gonna go like that. Okay, you guys, so the face is set. And now it is time for contour. And so like I said before, darkness is going to suck in and brightness is going to pop out. So what we want to do, I think that with contour and blush and all that stuff, there's so many trends going on, especially in this world of TikTok and Instagram. There are so many different techniques with contour. However, something will always remain the same. You are going to want to, and you can make this as chiseled as you want, you know, uh, or as non-chiseled as you want. It's totally up to you. The darker you go, the more chiseled you, you will become. Okay, so I am just taking, this isn't even contour, by the way. This is a blush shade uh, by MAC, and that's okay. Like, that's totally okay. I like this color for my contour, and if you find something that's not contour that you wanna use, you go for it. If it looks good and it works for you, then it works. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like people get so beat up about like, oh, that's not contour, you're not doing blush right. Like, no, it works for you. You can try, you can always improve and all that stuff, but if you like the way that it looks on you and you feel confident, then do it. Like. Who is anyone else to tell you that you can't do it like that? So what I'm going to do, something that will never change for me anyway in the, in the general idea of contour is we're gonna want to sink in this part right below our cheekbones. And so what this is going to do, and I'm, I am barely touching this brush to my face. It is very, very soft. So this isn't really contour that I have on right now. It's, it's more of bronzer that I'm doing. And that is, you can skip this step if you just want to do contour. But I'm bringing back a general shape to my face. And so I'm going along right underneath my cheekbone here and then under my jawline because I want those areas to be a little bit more sunken in and chiseled. And so what that is going to do, it's going to make my face look more lifted. It's going to make me look skinnier, which I love, you know? And I, I like to add a decent amount of contour. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. Or some people, they don't even use contour anymore. They just use blush and that's also fine. Something that you do want to do though, no matter what, is integrate this a little bit into your hairline like that. And what that is gonna do, it's just gonna make it look a little bit more natural, like a shadow, you know, not like you're, you're wearing so much makeup, but you just have this natural shadow from the bone structure of your face. And that's all it's doing really, it's enhancing the bone structure, the beautiful bone structure that you already have, which is great. Now I'm gonna be taking a little bit thinner but still fluffy brush and just going a little bit darker. And this time I'm not gonna go so far. I'm not gonna go so far down and so blended and so fluffy. I want these lines to be a little bit more precise um, just to really sharpen them, you know, and make sure it looks like it has purpose. And the reason I'm only going, if I bring my bronzer down to here, right, or I, I bring it down here, 
I want to bring the contour halfway there. And the reason that I'm doing that is to make it look a little bit more natural. And you guys can always go back in and blend and buff out if it's too sharp or you can add more if it's not sharp enough. Again, it's personal preference on everything where you want it. And I see a lot of people get so <laughs> up in atoms about not having super sharp uh, bronzer along with the contour, but once again, if it works for you, like, it works for you, guys. That's what you like on your face and that's what you like on your face, you know? So, same thing, same rule. I'm blending that into the hairline, just darkening it up a little bit. And you can already see, I'm sure, the shape of my face has changed pretty drastically from just having that foundation on to now having a little bit more chisel. Going in now with blush, I'm a big fan of blush. A lot of people aren't, although uh, the trend right now, blush is in, blush is in with the young kids. And I've, it's funny, because I've always loved blush. And so when I found out that it was like a trend, I, I was like, oh my God, am I hip? Like, am I, am I a trendsetter? Like, oh my God, even though clearly I'm not, you know? But uh, when you're applying blush, you guys, you want to keep it on like the highest points of your cheek over here. So I am just using, this is, I love this blush so much. I love it. If you don't want such a strong blush like this, you absolutely don't have to. They even have blushes that are like, basically a bronzer or a contour and you can do something like that also uh but this is like so cute it's called pink swoon by mac and you just kind of want to depending if you want your face to look a little bit more round that means you're going to have more of a blush motion side to side like this you still want to do kind of circular motions like this you know but if you want, and this is more every day, I would say, if you want glam, sharp, beyond like boom, then you're going to be doing your blush slightly down like this, almost like where you're a little bit under where your highlighter would go, which is right here. So you want to be like right above your contour, right in between the contour and the highlight. Personally, for every day, I just like to do a little bit more, you know, rosy-ish. I don't like to do the whole sharp thing for every day when I'm going out, you know, on the town than I do. But again, this is what works for you. This is not, if you want to look snatched 24 hours a day as soon as you walk out of your house, then do it. Do it. Snatch, snatch yourself up, girl. You do that. The next step is still a part of the contour. The only thing is, this I think is the trickiest, trickiest part because everyone has different face shapes, obviously, and that's going to depend on how you contour your face. I'm gonna do in-depth videos for all of these things. I know this is rather long. I'm just scratching the surface on some of the things that will change your face and everything like that. So we're gonna do more personalized videos uh, that are really educational for you guys. But when it comes to nose contour, this is so impossible for some people, myself included, <laughs> okay? It's really hard. Nose contour is hard. You can skip it if you want. You don't have to do nose contour. I personally do because I like to contour my nose a lot. I don't particularly love some aspects of my nose and that's okay. But this needs to be a whole nother video. I am just going to show you how I do it on my nose and we're gonna go from there and I'll create a whole new video on how to do nose contour in depth because it's very hard. A lot of the times you just see straight down nose contour and all that. We're not gonna do that. 
we're not, I'm not going to do that. I don't like doing that. It doesn't work for me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take one of my eyeshadow brushes very lightly into my contour that I used. And I'm going to go, I'm starting from the bottom here. So if you look at the shape of my nose and <laughs> I'm not bashing myself or anything like that, but I do not have a symmetrical nose to go just straight down like that. And that's totally okay. It's totally fine. It's totally okay. This is how I correct it. Okay. So all of the areas where I want sunken in a little bit, if you guys can see, I don't, I hope that you can see on here, but my nose has a bridge that goes almost like a diamond shape like this. And it's particularly harsh on one side, which is this one rather than this one. I know, I know what you guys are going to say. You're like, Oh my God, it's no big deal. And I love y'all for that. I totally love you. And it's totally fine. I don't hate my nose. I'm just saying, this is how you correct issues like that. If you are having one. So you're going to put the contour on the areas that are popping out to you that you don't want to pop out. So I'm doing just like barely touching and barely touching and I'm going like that here and just connecting that down here. So what I'm doing is skipping this part here because it sinks in and it doesn't need to be sunken in anymore by adding this. If anything, I could add a little bit of highlight over here. And so my nose goes from looking, I know it's not that drastic. I know guys, I know, I know. I'm just saying this is how you correct crookedness. So if you have a nose like mine that goes out here, in here, out here, what you do to the places that go in is that you add light and you add darkness to the places that go out so much just so that it's straight. It doesn't have to be the, no one has a perfect nose. No one, even if you get a nose job, you're still not going to have a perfect nose. No one has, no one's, no one's face is absolutely perfect. So that's just what I like to do. Okay. So I like to go in with a little bit of darkness over here. I don't like too harsh nose contour. So then I take the contour, the bronzer, whatever you use for this. I'm going to take that and I'm just going to pinch it like this very lightly. I am barely, barely even touching my nose with this. And I'm just going to go down like this. And this is going to very lightly. If there's any harshness from my eyeshadow brush, it's just going to buff it out a little bit. What you can also do is you can take a clean buffing brush like this and just go right along the edges here and buff that out. What you can also do is take a little bit of your setting powder, your translucent powder, anything, your powder foundation, anything that you want to do and just go along the sides like this to buff it out. And so that is how you fix this nose contour. Um, but again, we're going to do a whole another video about that. Moving on you guys now to eyes. And I know this is like such a long video, but, uh, it's a lot of information, especially when you're a beginner, it can be really overwhelming. And I just want to break this down for you guys. Step-by-step step, you can skip around within the video for anything that you really are having trouble with or struggling with. The next thing on our list to talk about you guys is eyebrows. And so I'm laughing because eyebrows are so tricky because Eyebrows are the trend, okay? Like there is no other trend besides eyebrows. That's it, like eyebrows. You can tell, and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if you're a beginner at makeup and you know like nothing about makeup, I can, you can look at somebody's eyebrows and you can tell like what decade it is or what year it is. Like it's so funny to see these trends. Like in 2016, we had these super like, like block bush, not bush, but like ooh, eyebrows, like snatch, you know, that was the birth, the birth of the Instagram brow. And I swear to God, 
I can smell the tequila in pictures of 2016 eyebrows. Like it's so funny to see, but general rule of thumb, when you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend following these crazy trends. Uh, I mean, some of them are not so crazy. Some of them are kind of fun, anything. You can, again, do whatever you want. But general rule of thumb for beginners uh, eyebrows, don't do what you see on like Instagram and TikTok or anything like that. Uh, unless you really, really, really like that and that's what you want to do, then go for it. But general rule of thumb is you are supposed to only fill in the areas that you need to make your brows look as natural as possible. So you guys are going to have to forgive me. I'm going to bring up this mirror right over here and just do my brows like so. So I'm doing areas and just where I'm missing. And another thing is when you're doing your brows, you want to try and lift this up a little bit. You don't have to go crazy and really overdraw your brow up here. But if you are going to add, don't add down. Always try to raise your arch like that. So I am going, let me show you guys what I mean. So we'll go on the top here. I'm missing a little bit of hair right there. So let's even that out. And what is gonna happen? And I'm only going on the bottom down here. And then when I push that up, my brow, all right, this is actually even a little bit much up here for me. I don't typically add so much, but just for dramatization for you guys so that you can see. My arch is already raised so much just from doing that. And my eye is so much more lifted on this side than it was before. And it just, it adds something, you know, it really makes your, your eyebrows pop. What I also like to do sometimes if I want an even more snatched look is I take a flat brush like this. It can be a concealer brush. It can be anything. And I just take tiniest, tiniest amount of foundation or they have primers that are really thick that you can use or concealers. And I just will go right under there and make that a little bit sharper and clean up any darkness that also adds a highlight underneath your brow bone right over there, which really makes your eyes pop. And it's really, really nice. You can use a ton of different things for your eyebrows. You can use powders, you can use, uh, pencils like this, anything, pomades, whatever you personally like. Uh, I think that pomades can be a little bit dry for me and powder doesn't necessarily last so long on me over here just because my skin gets so oily and there's no primer or anything underneath it on my eyebrows that it just it doesn't work for me. But if that works for you, then definitely do that. And I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other side. Another tip with your eyebrows, guys, is typically you want it to start right over here. So if you have a brush or anything like this, you can go from your nose all the way up and that should be your starting point. And then the corner of your eye like this should be your end point. So I can even extend that a little bit more, just like that. That could be your end, should be your end point. And then you just start from there. Moving on now to eyeshadow guys. And I'm not gonna go super in depth with eyeshadow on this video just because there's just too much. There's just too much. <laughs> so uh, even trying to scratch the surface of this one, like I'm trying to scratch the surface of the other ones, it's really hard. So I'm just gonna give you a few basic tips here. So first is I always like to use a primer because eyelids get very oily and very greasy very fast. So you want to ensure your makeup is not gonna go anywhere by just adding a little bit of primer. You can use anyone that you want. I like Urban Decay's All Nighter. I think that that is like so, so good. They're so good. Uh, 
I am a huge fan of that line. As you saw, I had the face primer. I also have the setting spray that we're gonna be seeing later on in the video. And for me, it is golden. It is like the only primer, anything. It's just, oof, it's just good. You know, just good. So for my eyeshadow look today, I'm just gonna do something really, really, really simple. I'm just gonna use uh, my Makeup by Mario palette. This is uh, Masters Matte. So uh, we're also gonna do a video on eyeshadow palettes and everything that you guys need to know about them because there's just, there's so much. So I'm not gonna go over so much here with you guys. It's just gonna take a long time, but my main piece of advice for working with eyeshadows as a beginner is start with light colors. And shape is more important than the colors that you choose. So you're going to be going with the shape of your eye specifically. You have to find out what that is, is the problem. So you have, it's not a problem, but it's tedious to do. And that's why so many people, they struggle with doing their eyeshadow looks because it's hard to find out your eye shape and what works for you and your eye shape. So for example, on me, I have a little, I have a little bit of a hooded eye. And so what that means is that I don't have much lid space. You'll see something that you guys are gonna notice. Go on Instagram right now. Go on Instagram right now, girl, or after this video, or just in general, go on some YouTubers. You'll see most of them have a lot of eyelid space to work with, whether that be the crease underneath the crease over here, or their eyebrows are raised quite high so that they have this big area to work with. For someone like me, if you are like me, you are not gonna be creating these looks that they have and have them come out looking exactly like they do on Instagram or YouTube. The reason for that is that anything <laughs> that you do is gonna look much more dramatic. Just like anything that I do is gonna look much more dramatic. And that's simply because there is too much shadow over here and not enough light. So when not enough light and surface area is there, it creates something that is, it's still gonna look beautiful. You can absolutely recreate these, these looks, like absolutely. But just know that it won't look like it does on the picture on eye shapes that don't have a lot of surface area because it just won't. That's just the light, it's just lighting, it's just, that's just how it is. And I have it too, girl. Like I, I know it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not the move, but, uh, it can be really, 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 really beautiful. So my recommendation is start with lighter colors and then see what you are comfortable with for drama. And also just don't go up as much. You guys can see, I hope. I am like barely going up. I'm really actually barely bringing this up at all. It looks like I have a lot of makeup on right now, but I really, 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 really do not. I really don't. And you don't have to over blend or anything like that. I'm doing like a really simple eye look right now. Everyone can do this, but we're going to have a ton of different eyeshadow looks on this channel. So you can absolutely see all of those. Another trick for eyes like mine and hooded eyes, if you want more of a cat eye, which I definitely love. I love, 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 love. I never, 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 never. You'll never see me go down like to my lid. You'll always see me bring that out a little bit and up and go further than my eye actually stops or my crease actually stops. So I brought this dark color. My crease stops a little bit 
more to the center and I brought it out a little bit more and what that does is just swoops it up and makes it a little bit more elongated. I also like to connect this dark color and just the corner of my eye right over here. And this is if you have particularly round eyes also because some people have like almond hooded eyes like that and this, this, this will make it even more, even more dramatic. Okay you guys, so my eyeliner is on and so the next step is our lashes. So if you don't already, definitely I would recommend getting yourself an eyelash curler. Even just using this baby every day, if you're not wearing any makeup at all and you curl your lashes, it makes such an enormous difference and it just makes you look so awake and so bright and your eyes just pop so much. So what we're going to do and how we're going to apply this is we are going to take our eyelash curler and push almost so it's all the way at the root and then we're just going to twist and hold that back a little bit. If this is pinching you at all or anything like that, you don't have to do this. It does definitely require some practice. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it go. From there, I'm gonna close my eye and then lift it out. And so already, I don't know if you guys can see on the camera because the lights are a little bit bright, but already my eyelashes are like so, <laughs> so much better than before. And I'm just gonna do the same thing to the other eye. And so the technique of doing this where I lift it up and then I let it out and close my eye is what that does is it holds the shape of the curl rather than taking it off, like flipping it back and then taking it off, if that makes sense, because you're kind of undoing what you just did. So for mascara, I'm using my favorite Waterproof Dior mascara. The thing is though, guys, Waterproof mascara is the way to go. It's just the way to go. I'm so, it's the way to go. And how I'm gonna apply this is I'm gonna start all the way from my root and I'm just gonna shimmy, 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 shimmy. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. All the way up and you guys will see it's not going. I hope you guys can see this, but it's not, kind of the, the darkness isn't reaching all the way to the top and that's okay because we're not gonna shimmy up there. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to blink on our mascara. So we're just gonna go like this, blink, 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 and push these lashes up. What this is gonna do, it's gonna keep the shape of your lashes and also just make them look really, really bold and beautiful. You can kind of go back and forth between shimmying and blinking if you want, however you want to put on your mascara, whatever you think works for you. But my number one beauty tip is wear mascara, take care of your lashes, or even I love, I love lash extensions. I'm like a huge fan. You feel so good when you have them on, even if you're just going to the market or the gym or anywhere, you feel so good with them on. So if you are a beginner at makeup, I know they're very expensive to get done and I know they're really time consuming, but if you're a beginner at makeup and you feel like that's something that you want to do that you can do, I would definitely recommend lash extensions from a good artist. You have to make sure that you are getting such a good professional uh, artist done and getting an appointment with them uh, because obviously these are your lashes. Not only that, but this is right around your eye and you don't want to cause any permanent damage to any, any area uh, around your eye at all. And so you can already tell a huge difference between this eye and this eye just from the mascara and we haven't even added any falsies or anything like that. So it's so good, this, these, little, these little tips and tricks. And another trick that I really like to do with my lashes, guys, 
is I just like to take a clean spoolie. If I feel like it's a little bit cakey or a little bit chunky, I'll just brush it out with a clean spoolie. Sometimes I'll go and rotate, but I'm always rotating so that it won't get rid of my curl if I'm gonna go in there and try to remove products like that. Okay, you guys, so I did get a little bit of mascara on my eyelid, which is no big deal. It happens all the time. And especially when you're just starting, it used to happen to me all the time, especially because my natural lashes along with this curl, they go all the way up to my eyebrow. So it's very easy for me to get that little dot or anything if it's not completely dry. So what I'm gonna do, some people take a Q-tip. I actually prefer to take a brush with some hard bristles and just go bloop, right over that spot. And that actually kind of scrapes it off without getting a lot of my eyeshadow off, if that makes sense. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the same blending brush that I used and go over that one more time, just to soften it, you know? And it's gone, that's how you fix that, which is great. I'm gonna put on my uh, false lashes off camera, you guys, but we will be doing a separate video on how to apply falsies. Alrighty, so my lashes are on you guys and next we're gonna be moving on to lips. So I did, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I did add a little bit more blush. And the reason that I did this, and this is important for our next step, is I looked at my eye look and I thought to myself, okay, this could be a little bit cuter, a little bit more bubbly. And what does that and what fix that is a little bit more blush. The reason why I'm telling you this is because with lipstick, you have to know your makeup is like a journey with anything, with your eyes, with your contour, with everything, right? So you have to find the key to a good makeup look is balance. It's not making sure that everything, you know, if you wanted a, a red, really, really bold lip, you know, you have to find out things that go with that for your specific face and your style and everything like that. So for this specific look, I'm choosing to do a nude uh, lip. I normally do a nude lip because it's just my favorite. I think it is so, it just goes with everything. It's like, it's like French nails, you know, a nude lip. It's just, it goes with everything. It's never too bold. It's never too, it's just, it's wonderful. You can wear it out to dinner, everything like that. So the reason I'm talking so much before I'm doing this is because uh, I won't be able to talk to you guys while I'm putting on my lipstick, obviously. But something that I really, really want you guys to pay attention to is the technique that I'm using. And the thing is, a lot of people now are overlining their lips, which is fine. I'm a big fan of overlining. I'm going to do it myself right now. However, there's a way to do it properly that makes it look very clean and neat. And then there's a way to do it where... You know, it might not be as flattering uh, as you think uh, it would turn out, you know, and uh, we've all, we've all been there, all been there. So I'm just going to be taking my NARS. This is just one of my NARS lipsticks. I'm going to link everything down below too for you guys. And I'm going to go where the shadows so for my bottom lip here, where the shadow ends, right there. Another good lip tip, guys, is that you want to try to make everything as symmetrical as possible. No one has a totally symmetrical face. No one has a totally symmetrical nose, totally symmetrical lips. But uh, if you just want it to be a little bit more enhanced and look a little bit more elegant, eloquent, ele ele elegant, <laughs> here I am talking about being eloquent. I can't even speak words. So. 
<laughs> okay, uh, so we're gonna be taking this from the very top and going in just like that. So this is, again, there are so many different lip shapes out there, but this is my lip shape. I kind of have my Cupid's bow is a little bit, it's a little bit more triangular, you know, and I would like it to be a little bit more flat so that it gives my lips the illusion of being a little bit fuller. So that is where I'm going to be doing my overlining a little bit. So. I hope that you guys can tell I did overline this a little bit. However, I am going now from the corner and I'm going all the way up. And meeting that. And meeting that overline. So I'm not overlining in this outer corner over here. I am only, only, only overlining in this area right over here to connect to the overline in the middle. So the problem is if you overline these inner corners over here, it's not gonna look natural, it's not gonna look neat, it's not gonna look clean at all. So what you wanna do is you wanna start the overline maybe halfway, right over here. So go to your natural line until around here, and then bring it up. But just straight like that. And so already you can see my lips are a little bit more full. I am going to clean this up and I am going to, I think, I don't know, what do you guys, do you think a little bit of gloss or do you think no gloss? What do you guys, I think maybe, maybe a little bit of gloss, maybe a little bit, I don't know, maybe. But uh, <laughs> what I'm gonna do first, you guys, and this will make your lips look a lot bigger, is I'm going to be taking a darker liner, not much darker, it is not much darker, just a little tiny bit darker, and I'm gonna be going in my corners a little bit, like so, and just, I'm very, 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 very lightly bringing this line down here and all this is gonna do it's not even changing so much the color even though it is it's changing the shadow so what it's doing like i said dark sinks in and brightness is pushed forward so by doing these outer corners i'm going to do all four of them the really puckery parts of my lip, which is the middle part right there, it's gonna pop more at you, which is gonna make it look so much more full. And I love that, I love that. Yeah, I think a little bit of gloss. I think a little bit of gloss, guys. But I'm gonna go back in first with that same lipstick that I used from NARS and just go over that, making sure it's not too dark because I still want kind of like a, a very subtle nude. And this step is a game changer, guys. It is a game changer. <laughs> what we're going to do, and you would think that this would be self-evident, but it's not. It's not a self-evident, easy thing to figure out and do. We're gonna take tiniest, little bit of our foundation. Tiny, 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 minuscule amount. I'm not even, maybe I, there we go. Like minuscule, minuscule amount. And we're just gonna clean up the edges of our lip to give it a little bit sharper. It's just, it's gonna make it look so much more clean and you'll see the difference. already guys there is a massive difference it looks just so much more clean and 
it's just, it's such a good trick. And I think maybe I do want a little bit of gloss, guys, just to add like, you know, a little bit extra something, something, you know? And I, I love this gloss right here by Fenty. It is like the best ever. It is so, so good. It is Diamond Milk. And let's see, I'm just gonna add that again to the middle. I'm not gonna add a lot. And I just wanna go over that with my finger. I knew, I knew it. I knew you guys would tell me that gloss was a good idea. So I went with the gloss and it was a good idea. I think it was a good idea. I hope, hope you guys think it was a good idea too. <laughs> okay, so that is my tutorial for beginners. I know it is a lot of information, guys. I haven't even scratched the surface and I know it was a lot of me talking, but hopefully this was helpful to you. I know being a beginner, makeup is, is so scary. Makeup is so, so scary because of a lot of reasons, but first and foremost, you're putting your art to the world, you know? that's It's scary, it's intimidating to do that, and more power to you if you can have the confidence to do that, and I, I think that that's great, and that's one of the reasons why I love makeup so much. And I know there's a lot of technical stuff and it's so, so much information, but I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. Thank you so much for being a part of my community here on YouTube. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. If you have any questions or anything that I did not cover in this video, please leave them down below for me. Like I said, I will be expanding on all of these topics in their own separate videos because it's just the tip of the iceberg, all the information that I said to you guys about foundations, about everything, and there's so much more. So stick around for that, guys. Make sure you don't miss out on any of my weekly videos by subscribing and turning on that notification bell. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.